there's methane gas leaking from an Alaskan lake. Can you feel it getting hotter? If not, you will. Researchers have discovered a lake in Alaska that is bubbling due to methane emissions. In a feature for the Washington Post, according to Katie Walter Anthony, an associate professor at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, the bubbles in Lake Essia are being caused by methane gas release. Due to increasing temperatures from global warming, ground that used to be permafrost in the Arctic is now thawing and releasing trapped greenhouse gases into the air, thereby accelerating climate change. The gases are geological in origin. The researchers say there are fossil fuels buried close to the bottom of the lake and in combination with the melting of the permafrost represent a source of greenhouse gases. The lake emits around two tons of methane gas daily, the equivalent of methane emissions from 6,000 dairy cows. Scientists will need to do further research to see if this phenomenon is occurring in other Arctic lakes. Keep watching for more cool stories. Tanning drug could prevent skin cancer. Scientists have developed a drug that can tan human skin without the harmful effects of ultraviolet radiation. In tests on skin samples and mice, researchers found a way to trick the skin into producing melanin. Ultraviolet light causes the skin to tan by damaging it. This starts a chain of chemical reactions in the epidermis that eventually leads to the production of dark melanin, the body's natural sunblock. Researchers have developed a drug that, when applied to the skin, triggers the process of producing melanin without the need for UV light. Tests of the drug were conducted on mice before they were experimented on samples of human skin. Even without exposure to UV rays, the human skin cells darkened as they would when exposed to sunlight. The study also showed melanin produced from being triggered by the drug was able to block harmful UV rays. The drug still needs to go through more safety testing and is not yet ready for commercial use. Researchers eventually hope to combine their drug with sunscreen to provide maximum protection from the sun. Large predators are reclaiming lost hunting grounds. Yay for large predators, unless you're unlucky enough to get eaten by one. According to Duke University researchers in a press release, large predator sightings such as alligators on the beach, killer whales in rivers, and mountain lions in open fields are a sign that local populations have rebounded thanks to conservation efforts. The study, published in the journal Current Biology, found that alligators and sea otters were actually recolonizing ecosystems that had been prime hunting grounds before humans decimated their populations. Duke scientists say alligators, sea otters, river otters, gray whales, gray wolves, mountain lions, orangutans, and bald eagle populations were either as abundant or more abundant in novel habitats than in traditional ones. Rebounding numbers have shown that several large predators once thought to be highly habitat-specific are actually quite adaptable. Harvesting energy from the sea. Japanese researchers have come up with special technology that can not only capture energy from waves, but also help protect coastlines. A team from Okinawa plans to set up energy harvesting turbines near tetrapods, which are concrete structures placed along the shore to weaken the force of incoming waves and prevent erosion. The turbine has five flexible blades modeled after dolphin fins. It's supported by a stem that's anchored to the seafloor with mooring cables, which, like the blades, is flexible and can bend under pressure. Inside the turbine head is a magnet electric generator, which transforms wave energy into electricity. The electricity is sent back to the shore via cables to feed into the grid. Using turbines on just 1% of Japan's coastline can generate roughly 10 gigawatts of energy, equivalent to about 10 nuclear power plants. Apart from tetrapods, the turbines can also harness electricity near coral reefs. They're built to be safe for marine life, with blade speed carefully calibrated so that any animals caught in them can escape unharmed. The team is currently preparing to install two half-scale model turbines that will power LEDs as part of a commercial demonstration. Detecting tsunamis early. Mathematicians may have devised a way to calculate the size and force of a tsunami well in advance, using underwater sound waves. A tsunami is a series of waves caused by the displacement of a large volume of water. Waves can surge as high as 100 feet and devastate coastal areas. Tsunamis are mainly caused by underwater earthquakes and are currently detected using pressure sensors and buoys. However, the system relies on a tsunami physically reaching a buoy to trigger an alarm. 
Scientists at Cardiff University in Wales have found that an early warning system can be developed by using a hydrophone to record acoustic gravity waves radiating from an earthquake. The waves carry information about the earthquake and can be used to determine the characteristics of a forthcoming tsunami, allowing for early detection. In the future, the team aims to be able to activate a tsunami alarm in near real time, within seconds of recording the signals. Floating Atlantic Wind Farm could meet the world's energy needs. Would you believe it if we told you the entire world could be powered by a wind farm in the Atlantic? We're not blowing hot air here. According to a new study, building a deep-sea wind farm the size of India that stretches across the North Atlantic could meet the whole world's power needs. Land-based wind farms can produce around 1.5 watts per square meter, while a wind farm in the Atlantic would be able to generate 6 watts per square meter. Several engineering challenges would have to be overcome. A deep-sea wind farm would have to operate in remote and harsh conditions, where waves frequently exceed 3 meters. Laying transmission cables that stretch across the ocean floor then connect to floating turbines in open ocean would be another obstacle. A project that big would also require international cooperation and a whole lot of money. Good thing we all get along so well. Most of the plastic in the ocean comes from these countries. Plastic waste is slowly but surely taking over the world's oceans, and the bulk of them apparently comes from just five Asian countries. A study from Ocean Conservancy estimates that 55 to 60 percent of plastic polluting the oceans comes from five countries – China, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uncollected and mismanaged waste on land accounts for about 80 percent of the 8 million metric tons of trash that flow into the oceans each year. Environmental organization Greenpeace claims corporations are also at fault for selling products in single-use plastic packaging, especially in so-called sachet economies like the Philippines. Various studies have shown that plastic pollution negatively impacts marine animals and may be indirectly affecting humans through the food chain. Fortunately, improving waste management practices in the five countries can result in a 45 percent reduction of global plastic waste leakage by 2025. In tackling plastic pollution, everyone has a role to play. From governments and big conglomerates to the people on the street, every bit helps. <laughs>